Trinity Anglican Church, St. John New Brunswick, for welcoming me here. And I wish you all a happy new year. Thank you. And, uh, it's nice to see that not everybody partied too long into the new year and made it here this morning. And we welcome you here to the service of the Epiphany to the Lord. We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship. Our opening hymn is 153 found in the large blue book, Good Christians All Rejoice. Of a star 
is manifest thy only begotten Son to the Gentiles. Mercifully grant that we who know thee now by faith may be led onward through this earthly life until we see the vision of thy heavenly glory. Through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the word of God. Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. Then shall he judge thy people according unto right. And the war of justice. The mountains shall bring peace. And the Lord of righteousness unto the He shall keep the simple folk by their right. Save the children of the Lord when he comes to the Lord. He shall live as long as the sun. And while the moon endureth. He shall come down like the rain upon the mown grass. In his time shall righteousness flourish. Yea, and the mildness of peace, so long as the moon endure. Let the kings of Tyrish and of the Isles give presents. And the kings of Arabia see of great gifts. Let all kings fall down before him. And all nations do his service. For he shall deliver the poor when he crieth. The needy also in the hand of no helper. He shall have pity on the weak and the needy. And, and shall tire the souls of the poor. He shall deliver their souls from falsehood and wrong. And tears shall be body in his sight. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, now and ever shall be more. Word of the Amen. Amen. Please remain seated as we listen to the word of God. The epistle is found in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. This is the reason I, Paul, am a prisoner for Jesus Christ, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote about in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed by his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. 
of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the workings of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is 125, verse 1, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, second chapter, beginning at the first verse. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observe his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over a place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod they left for their own country by another road the gospel of Christ
affirm our faith as we repeat the words of the Nicene Creed on the page 71 in the prayer book. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of God of being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost, the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and stood on the right hand of the Father, and Jesus will come again to the glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is first and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge the last remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. The words of my mouth and meditation of all our hearts be totally acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. What is your epiphany? I cannot go through any epiphany service without thinking about my journey to the priesthood. I went through a number of interviews and ultimately one question kept on being asked. What was my epiphany? What brought me to this time and place in my life that I would seek out the calling of the church? Webster's Dictionary speaks of epiphany as this, the observance of the church of the festival in commemoration of the coming of the Magi to Jesus in Bethlehem. We have over time have simplified the Christmas story, so much so that we've drifted away from the scripture somewhat. It would be rare for us to see a model or see a crash on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day and not see the wise men and magi standing proud there. We have named them. We have suggested there were only three. We do not know. We are not given that information. We assume that they came from three parts of the world. One from Peru and South America, one from India and South Asia, and one from Arabia in Western Asia. We align the Christmas story to December the 25th. However, the actual day is somewhat unlikely, but it was aligned to the winter solstice that the Romans celebrated. Not to mad to lessen the timing of the actual Magi's visit. Yes, they arrived at the Epiphany, but it was not for about two years after the birth of Christ. We celebrated 12 days after Christmas, the actual date of Epiphany. The Gospel this morning gives us all the clues if we spend time in it that I just read about the actual story. Our minds bridge over and make it fit the Christmas story that we all know so well. Giving gifts at Christmas, you might 
be surprised, but it originates back, we think, to the wise men giving gifts to Jesus. So unknowingly, you are wandering the ways of the wise men as you give gifts to those that you love. As I say, we don't know how many wise men. Nowhere does it say there were three. In Matthew, it says the wise men. In other scriptures, it will say some wise men. We know that it was about two years after the birth of Jesus because Herod asks the wise men, when did they first see the star arise? And then when Herod gets tricked and the wise men don't come back and tell him where Jesus is, he sends out his army to kill all the boys two and under. That tells you there's a two year gap. The wise men did not find the baby Jesus in the manger. The wise men found a child with his mother Mary in a house. It was all in the reading this morning. And the gospel further aligns us to the prophecies that were made centuries before. In Micah 5, 2. But you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be the ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. The birthplace being Bethlehem was important because this aligned Jesus to the family of David as it was foretold. In Isaiah 60, verse 6, we get, the, we get the prophecy centuries before of the journey of the wise men. And it says, herds of camel will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all from Sheba will come, bearing gold, incense, and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. Now the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, that might be an odd set of gifts to bring a child. But in reality, they're in Malatka. They represent very important aspects of who Jesus is and would become. Gold represents royalty. Frankincense is an oil used in worship or anointing, which speaks to the child's divinity. And myrrh was an oil used in the embalming, and it spoke to the great sacrifice that this child would grow up and have to endure on the cross for you and I. When you think about the story, there's something that should stick out as very odd. There are four groups looking for this boy Jesus. Two were successful and two were not. And it speaks about having the right attitude if we are to find Jesus. Then, and we're going to find Jesus today. The shepherds had the right attitude, and they were successful in finding Jesus. When you think this boy who's about two is living in Bethlehem, and the Jewish leaders, there's no mention of them ever finding him, so I guess they were unsuccessful. The Magi were successful. They had the right attitude. They were focused. Then you've got the King Herod and all his army of all the intelligence that he would have at his disposal, yet he did not know where the boy Jesus was for the past two years. We can go through life thinking and being in search of Jesus, the truth, but never truly finding him. Unlike the wise men, the wise 
men that questioned me a few years back about my journey. When they asked me what my epiphany was, they were looking for a single event that may turn a switch on in me that said I should do this in my life. And my answer to them then, and my definition, I guess, of the epiphany now would be, it's not so much a single event, it's a journey in life. It does not start and end at a service of epiphany that we're doing today. We're all on this life's journey. And we're all somewhere on our own journey, and every one of our journeys will be different. But we all should be keeping our focus on that continual search for who Jesus is in our life and what he asks of us to do. There's yet another critical message embedded in Matthew's Gospel this morning. And it centers around making right choices. The wise men were given direction by King Herod to come back and talk to him once they found the boy. But they paid attention to a dream. I don't know about you, but I dream every night. In fact, I woke up in a dream this morning. Strange as it was, it has nothing to do with any of this. <laughs> and it's so bizarre, I wouldn't even bother talking to you about it. Oddly enough, the same alarm that was ringing in my dream woke me up about a minute later. So I guess I was coming to consciousness thinking that the alarm was going to go off. But the reality is, we have choices in life. And if we still our life down slow enough, we might hear God's voice and say, go right or go left, do this or do that. How many of us can think back in our life, most of us have about the same color hair, how many choices have we made that we probably should have went right versus left? That's history. Today, as we start this new year, 2023, we have the challenge, the challenge that was laid in front of the wise men back in the day to make the right choice. They were given two options. And I expect the option they took wasn't the easiest road to walk. But what it tells us is how important even the slightest decision we make in life, how great the impact it could have. The decision the wise men made that day, if they had made the wrong decision, it would have been irreversible. We wouldn't probably be who we are today. So as we close, the star gave the Magi a challenge. They wandered and wandered, but they kept their focus on the star. Is there a star in our future? Try to find a way to slow your life down 
to hear God as you have to make decisions in this coming year. Let us pray. O God, on this day, reveal your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star. Grant mercy that we who knew you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. <coughs> Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and in the unity of thy Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let your light shall shine before others, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Our offertory hymn is 137, What Child Is This?
live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations into the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Charles, our King, and to all that are put in authority under him, that they may truly and impartially administer justice for the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, such as thy servant David, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meet, heart, and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Especially remembering those that are on our hearts this morning, and those on our parish prayer list. Remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants that depart this life in faith, by faith and fear. And this morning we join together with the church throughout the world, especially with the Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the Catholic Church in mourning the death of Pope Emeritus Benedict. In his life and ministry, Pope Benedict strove to direct people to Christ. May he now rest in Christ's peace and rise in glory with all the saints. And we bless thy holy names for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Jesus, do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and our love and charity of your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life along the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near in faith and take his holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time will previously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, we are in the and our hearts are sorry for these harmless doings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy and promised forgiveness of sin, to all them with hearty repentance, true faith, turn unto him. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sin. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comes from the word our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Here also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John saith, if anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, he is a propitiation for our sins.
creator and preserver of all things. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, thou hast caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of thy glory in the face of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels of all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. Thank you. 
The communion hymn is hymn number 160, Ours with Gladness.
God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and those of whom we pray this day forward. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is 138, Heart the Herald Angels Sing, followed by the choral benediction.
Go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.